Okay, just giving you a second to catch up. We're going to hit a couple of things here. One is going to be Miami Herald's article. This is, and for clarity, this is not Tipitone. This is uh, by Aaron somebody. Um, Brezel. All right, so Aaron Brezel is going to make a couple of mistakes here as far as the public's interest is concerned. Let me cut to the chase based on my title. Why we need Lewis Berger to hold out. Don't believe the narrative here where they say that the $42 million and they use this one person here who's one of the uh, lawsuit people, they give them some type of qualifications to speak up. Grossman here was in one of the vehicles, I believe. <clears throat> um, Grossman is, he says, we're down to one defendant now, Grossman said. One defendant. Um, Alex Duran was in the bridge and fell. Humble 19 survived. Doran was crushed. Um, somebody they wrote in here. I can't read their minds. I don't know why they want to upset this apple cart, said Stuart Grossman. Why they want to upset this apple cart? This is the way they look at it. This person looks at it. An attorney for Richard uh, said Stuart Grossman. An attorney for Richard Humble, who was a passenger in SIU, driven by eight. So the, the lawyer, this Grossman, you know, representing this person, Richard Humble, um, for the one victim. I think Humble lived the yes, right. The bridge fell on the Humble, uh, Humble, 19 years old, survived, right. Um, says, uh, calls it an apple cart. I don't know why, why they want to upset this apple cart. We want them to upset the apple cart, guys. Why do we want Lewis Berger to upset the apple cart? Because it would force a trial, we would hope. If it forces the trial, we'll be we'll get the real data out there. We'll get the real information. If this is swept under the rug with these guys just getting this the millions of dollars, then uh, we'll never know what really happened. We're going to have to trust the data that's going to be leaked to us. When I say leaked, given to us, spoon fed to us by NTSB, because apparently all the other parties are already going to give given all they're going to give, um, <clears throat> and we don't know what else it will require. What will the judge put his party party to this agreement? Will she put something in there that uh, says something like, "You will not be able to release, you know, data from this point forward"? So it makes your FOIA request kind of a uh, uh, shit canned, if you will. Um, so we don't know what this judge is going to try to to reach on. We know now judges try to cross the line into uh, federal law frequently, so. This might be uh, uh, something that might be part of their party, their uh, their agreement. Now, again, Lewis Berger, we want them to resist. Now, in favor of Lewis Berger, um, so we're going to talk for and against. Against would be, hey, uh, only against if the failure was because of uh, because of it, that it ultimately did fail because of the the uh, engineering. But what if it did not fail because of engineering? Give me a second, guys. I gotta give me a second on the noise. Okay. So, um, what if it didn't fail because of engineering design? Maybe it failed because of impl implantation, implantation, implantation. Right, implantation of it was well, such as maybe uh, uh, Erica with that post tensioning changing of changing causes the failure. Because we do have a transverse and longitudinal failure. Longitudinal failure for sure. Transverse, I believe, is uh, also an issue. And I want to show you in another video that I'm going to use my little display I made with the uh, strings and the spray foam to show you that um, unlike, uh, let's just call it out, unlike engineering tips and everybody who's over there who likes me, then that's great. Everybody doesn't like me. Well, I find you like that guy. Uh, uh, there's about three of them over there that went out of the way. Well, they, two of them, I think, call themselves structure engineers. Uh, Earth being one of them, Earth is lacking common sense. A lot of them are talking about the linear footage of the weight of the structure. And how is that possible? Well, it does have number 11 and no, number one and number 12 has loads going down it. You can't discount them. And by not adding them, by not taking in the factor that they're sitting over top of the piers, that they don't have the linear foot weight of the unsupported span. You got an unsupported span and you got the dead load that goes directly down into the piers. That's got to be deducted. 
You just don't just add have the whole bridge added up. These are the math errors that cause failure. And these guys are attempting to find failure, but they can't even see the error in their own math. Another one is the linear footage they keep coming up with. It's This is the most ridiculous thing I, I've heard of. You're, one guy like Earth says he does great concrete work and he's a post-tensioner. Well, if you're post-tensioner, then you now know that if I took away the uprights, if I took away all the uprights, the diagonals, correction, the diagonals in the uh, in this in this bridge, just remove them, right? Put no post tensioning between the two, between the canopy and the deck. How is that bridge staying in the air? Well, it's staying in the air through the post tensioning. It's only two cables per side right now on that canopy, 16 foot wide. It's staying in the air by the loads transferring down number one and number 12. It didn't just break in the middle. It might break in the middle, ultimately. You know, it might heave in the middle. Um, so we do have uh, the post-tensioning does transfer the loads down 1 and 12. And now we have a deck. Now I, have the, now I want you guys to visualize the deck only, the transverse cables, the longitudinal cables, how it's holding the deck up only itself. Now you can put your members in between there, if you will, your, 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 uh, vertical, your, your verticals, your verticals, your diagonals. Put your diagonals in part vertical. Uh, now they're all slightly on an angle. So put your diagonals uh, inside there, numbers 2 through 11. Um, that's tying the two structures together. But at the nodal points, um, and not number 1 and 2 and not number 11 and 12, they rest over top of piers. But the rest of the nodal points in the deck, the loads that the canopy that I just told you guys would have that that load that in the center, if you didn't have the uprights in there, uh, the diagonals in there, they are transferring their loads down the diagonals into the deck, into the deck. So let's show you here. Let's go up to the top here. So they're transferring the loads down the diagonals into the deck. So now the, the transverse cables theoretically would would th two ways. One, you can have them all go all the dead loads go down number one and and number twelve, which those four cables and the sixteen foot uh, one foot thick deck. You know, I don't I don't know if it could do that. I don't know if it could do that without deflection. That would be awesome if it could. That would help out a lot if you could if that could be determined. Um, figuring out what's going on with uh, the rest of the structure. So you would determine, is that capable? If you want you to determine that it's capable or not capable. So if you say it's capable, then you go, great. All right, let's confirm, let's confirm the post-tensioning. Now, if you say, well, it's not capable. Okay, well, if it's not capable, that means that all the loads of these diagonals here, and even this one's on a slight angle, so it gets to call, we call the diagonal. So, um, all the loads of these diagonals now have a dead load on them, a live lo a dead load of the structure of the canopy down into the deck area. And so at that point, you now have the transverse and longitudinal cables transferring those loads out to the diaphragms, out to the ends, right here and here. So once again, for clarity, let's go ahead and take off, take all these guys out. Now, and then you evaluate, can the transverse cables, longitudinal cables, correction, longitudinal cables in the canopy support the deck, the canopy? If they cannot, then you figure out where, where the, uh, that these are now load-bearing. They're load-bearing, they're load-bearing, it just said it. That means that these create point loads. These are nodal areas with a, with a new po uh, point load here, if that's the, here, here, and here. Uh, mostly, and this is going down number one and number, uh, I'm sorry, down the pier, South Pier, and get the little bit of South Pier and North Pier. So I, I would count that as going down there. So the loads going down here, 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 and here, those are four points right between in the mid span. Mid span being from here to here, and so I'm calling this all the mid span of the, of the unsupported span of the structure, the mid span of this of this design of this section. So the, uh, so I'm taking liberty with the mid span there. So we have one, two, three, four nodal areas that are, that are now point loads. 
So you can't call this 175 pounds per linear foot per square foot or anything else because they're point loads. They go down a damn column, 1.9 inches, 1.9 feet. So these engineers over there, those, and I'm attacking them now, these engineers over there all talking about loads. It's ridiculous. These are columns you're looking at. They're point loads, columns. It's not a truss system. This is not a truss system. If it was a truss system, it would have tension and compression. Well, how the hell are you going to get how are you going to get uh, uh, tension on a concrete and, and cause and tell it to operate properly? Well, you can't make it work. So they said, well, then you put the bars in it so it doesn't do it. Well, then you just made it not be perform as a, as a truss. But you can go over there, guys. I, I implore you to go over there and look and see how they keep calling this a truss system with their structural engineering bragging about being structural engineers. I would uh, love to banter with one of them and 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 hear their reply to how these point loads are not addressed that they've got it down the linear footage and they're being dictated by uh some two new idiots that came in there and i'm just watching them that's earth and another one it's probably the same person just feeding off himself like a troll feeding one hand to the other hand and make and giving himself uh some some own motion but i i, I possibly is an engineer He's got some awesome terms with him, uh, but he doesn't know how to use them. So if he's a structural engineer, he needs to go ahead and put himself to bed. That means call it a day. Now, you guys know I don't pull punches. All right. I don't pull punches. I don't care if it was Denny Pate in the room. I would say the same thing. Are you shitting me? You know, I would say the same thing. Um, so you think I care about those guys over there uh, wanting to challenge me? I challenge them. Because I'll always win. Why will I always win? Simply because if I if they find me to be wrong, all I do is go, ah, great. I see your point. My gosh, I missed it. Hey, I so appreciate it. That's what makes me so strong as an engineer is that I can find, I can accept when I miss something and somebody else points it out to me and I go, oh, yes. Engineers mostly can't do that. In fact, I don't think I found another engineer that can do that. Well, I did. 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 But it was their friends. So I don't know if I could. I don't know if it was in a, in a, in a business, if it was, you know, a stranger, would they be able to do that? I, I don't know if they do that. I'd have to ask them, you know, and I'll do that today. I'll, ask, I'll call up one of them and ask them, has he ever admitted to being wrong to, uh, in, in, a, in a session, a group session? Interesting. Uh, you got to create to to make to 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 accept being wrong in a group session. You have to let people know that we can be wrong here, and I'm I'm asking for your help to prove me wrong, and I'm asking for it because I really want you to speak up, so possibly you can find something that I'm saying wrong, and then we can correct it together, or you can totally own it and own it all your own. You know, you can totally be the one correcting it. So we're never going to find out the truth as long as they do a settlement. If they don't do a settlement, we get to now find out the truth. Let me see if this is working on this video here. I'm talking to myself. As they do a settlement. So here's the article. Let's go into it. So it talks about how Lewis Berger is holding out and they're beating him up and they even used uh the lewis berger um we plaintiffs feel that his very strong case of negligence against lewis berger said alan godfrey an attorney for the family of duran who was a student at fiu first off he he was not hired to do any field inspections so how can you blame him for field inspections he was hired to do an evaluation because of the third party requirement by f guy that was it. So how can you hold them responsible? All you can hold them responsible for if it really turns out that some engineering flaws existed in the plans. But if there are no engineering flaws existing in the plans, then that means just through and through changing orders or something that did. And we have an Erica changing post tensioning. We have an Erica changing post tensioning. So we do have something going on there. And if we use extrapolation, and I'm open to, to uh, this, is I'm not, I'm not solid on this, I'm not owning this one, but 
if we use the Denny paid you software to check his bridge and you guys like software and it came out hey okay and we use f dot as checking out the computer uh, the the uh the uh the plans and all they came up was let's put some tent this with a bar number 11 and if we use um uh, uh or lewis berger running another different sauce software well we've come up with three different three different people evaluating it then we also have fiu who's the inspector who's the uh permitting authority they ran it through their pro through their uh through their engineering department too with the bridge design so we've got four at least four structural guys engineers going over this bridge and design before implementing it so why would it fail? We got four guys all making the same mistake, perhaps. Well, we won't know that unless they go to court. Unless they go to court, we will not know where the mistakes happen. We won't get the cross-examination and finding the details. They want to go to court because they've already got the money. They, they want to just lock it in and move on. And that's going to lock in everything against us being able to get data now. Lewis Berger should hold out, not just for the public, for us, that we want him to hold out. But because he could also argue that, well, three other, the same thing I just said, three other people said it was solid too. I looked at the plans. I made a few adjustments. They argue that in this plans that they're, that FIU, wait a minute, right here. While Fig design was structurally flawed, they said Lewis Berger was cited as one of the principal companies that fought for the March 2018 bridge collapse and a scathing report, and a scathing report we know as as oh here it is oh they went back to their own article uh yeah and let's see if i can get at it released by the federal occupation and safety and health administration while fig's design was structurally flawed according to experts consulted by the miami, miami herald well while Fig's design was structurally flawed, right there, I think that's that's sort of a, you know, that's reaching. The experts consulted by the Mamity Herald, uh, Lewis Berger compounded the issue when the lone Berger engineer assigned to the job conducted an inadequate review of an of intermediate stage of the project. Well, I don't know if it was intermediate stage. I think that was plans review. Would you call it intermediate or plans review? I think that was plans review um of the project osha found so also this guy he reported that he no longer was working there at one point so he doesn't know when at what point they changed plans still he does not know that he didn't state that and but to me that implies that the plans were changed beyond what he what he interviewed and stated because think of this they're interviewing him and he didn't brag about, yeah, everything I did on those plans, it's right exactly as you're looking at on the 2017 stamps. That's all my work, whatever. I'll, he didn't state that. So they use him as a, a uh, 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 you know, a smoke and mirrors, I call it. Because he never stated that. He stated that he left on his own terms or whatever it might have been, equal terms, or agreeable terms, whatever it might have been. Nevertheless, they hired that, that Lewis Berger went on with these plans apparently without him. So, what the hell do you need th this guy for? I mean, this this thing there that was just smoke and mirror stuff. When you see this guy, they they bring the interview of the guy, and he no longer uh, um, um, says he works there, and he went a separate way. I saw an interview on that, like waste smoke and mirrors. So now we come back to Lewis Berger um should stand their ground because they should stand the ground that my those 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 plans worked and here's the thing if they use software right and the software shows the plans work and lewis berger still gets found for faulty because of the, the uh software and he used the soft because of the uh he, that he says it should have worked and he can prove that the software all the data was from this bridge design was entered into the software correctly he could probably then sue the software company as another party. You could sue the software saying you're another party to this lawsuit because we entered all the data, all the criteria, nothing was extrapolated. It was all perfectly entered in the software. And your software said that this should work. 
So I trusted your software at tens of thousands of dollars a friggin' month or whatever it might be. Um, and your software caused, uh, was part of this problem. So even software companies should be being sued at this point. If this, if you're going to start going for it, they should go for the software companies also. All right. So this is, uh, this is a comma here. While Fig's design was structurally flawed, according to the experts consulted by the Mammy Harrell. That's like a period almost. Lewis Berger compounded the issue uh, when the lone Berger engineer, see this? There should be a period there. Uh, or, is, or are they saying, according to the expert consulted by Miami Herald, uh, Lewis Berger compounded the issue when the lone Berger engineer assigned to the job conducted an inadequate review of an intermittent. And we don't know. He says he's the lone Berger, uh, the, learn, the lone engineer. I did talk about that. That, that's, uh, that was a weird thing. They trusted one guy for it. And that was kind of weird. But who knows? Maybe he's the software programming guy. You know, maybe he can plug in software. Maybe he had to go his own separate ways because he plugged software in wrong before. And they were like, yo, you, you, whatever it might be. All right. So we just don't know. But Lewis Berger is declined to comment on ongoing investigation. They also declined to give OSHA report, OSHA the data they needed. So OSHA can't, you know, they don't have all the data. So how are they going to find against OSHA when they don't know exactly what OSHA is going to find against them when they don't know exactly what uh, Lewis Berger did? Because they're not coming forward with it. I'm going to get it, though. We're going to get this OSHA stuff. We are going to get all the data that was received. I, I've got. I'm. 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 I'm standing in line waiting for it. Um, so, with this case would have settled, we would have got. We would have access to the OSHA stuff. The moment this case settles, all this will be more. Will be further released. Some of it's released, but further released. Um, unless, unless the judge makes some type of fancy dancy. You know how these judges now are becoming becoming their own Congress now of the United States. They're making orders that supersede you know presidents and everything else it's just craziness so unless she comes up with something crazy saying yeah i, I find i'm also part of my judgment that you guys won't respond to any FOIA requests for data i mean you think that's crazy right FOIA is federal she's not a federal judge so but you think you should be a federal judge she's a state judge right it's federal money involved so uh but there we have it now they want to settle to resolve everything they don't want to they don't want this to come to court and be drawn out it might because uh criminal charges might be discovered it might be some criminal negligence come up and then people start screaming hey there was a testimony today and that's criminal negligence we want charges so all these people want to come forward and and pay off their insurance companies and pay the money to avoid criminal charges also by state and by implications but Lewis Berger standing his ground saying, hey, I'm willing to take the bite of that apple. Or Lewis Berger is playing the smartest apple of them all and saying, I got all you guys. You guys need me. So you know what? You need to, you need to find a way to exempt me out of this whole deal again, all together. Exempt me out. Push me aside. Say, I got nothing to do with it. Put that part of the court order, too, that, I, that we find Lewis Berger to not be at fault. And uh, Lewis Berger is playing the smartest hand of them all, the last person standing. Smartest person of them all, uh, company. And um, as far as it comes down to this. All right, I'm going to terminate the video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick uh, rendering of this of this release by Miami Herald and my critique of it. So the, 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 the right here, Fig and six other subcontractors. Contractors. Since then, there's been a cascade of additional parties settling. I think there's 40 something they said. Let's see. Uh, August 20th is going to be the next update uh, in the court. But the, uh, the they claim something like 40 something parties now. Where the heck is it? So I can find it real quick. In total, 23 uh, subcontractors joined the deal, which requires them to pay into a fund set aside for this affected. Oh, this one. I was going to do a separate video on this, but I'll give this to you now. The judge the judge in part of her court order so this is a found statement and i really wanted to give it in another video to make a found statement about it so i wanted to be that much and maybe i'll do it again so you guys will get redundant on it 
the profound statement is these people, these this bridge killed people. The judge is not ordering it. FIU lose its licensing. At this point, we see nothing, no indication of that. The judge is not ordering that FIG lose its licensing. The judge is not ordering that MCM lose its licensing. The judge is not ordering at this point any of these 23 subcontractors. We've seen no, no indication that anybody's being penalized besides money. So my point, my profound statement is that the judge wants the companies to survive. You understand survival? It means you and I make an agreement. And sometimes we make an agreement that survives past our separation, if you will. So I do, I do not disclose. Policy says after you know, you're no longer being paid by us, you won't disclose for a period of six months. It's the contract I signed. It survives. That part of the contract keeps surviving. So this judge wants these companies to keep surviving. It appears that not one company is being told don't practice anymore. There's no state, state uh, F dot or the, the state of uh, Florida at this point is showing nothing where they're saying that we want MCM not to be a business in the state anymore. I don't know about you guys, but I hold a, I hold a couple of licenses in a couple of states. Part of that is, man, they can haul you into a room, and in that room, they can talk about taking your license if you do some damage. And I've known a couple of contractors and engineers that have been called into that room and been talking about, let's talk about whether we're going to take your license today or not. And it appears that this conversation is not taking place here. That nobody, that it's surviving, and I base that on, we see FIG now practicing and in, uh, in another state with no indication and oh I got great news on that so I'm gonna get a I'm getting a a giant CD being sent to me by uh, the structure engineering up on that bridge that uh, fig is uh, being dealt dealing with up there um, I should be getting it. it's like 700 pages so it might come in the mail today but it's awesome it's gonna be awesome I'm gonna share that with you guys and but we we at least not forget about what, what's going on here don't fall for the smoke and mirrors back in the day was it the hokey poke the shake and bake whatever the hell you want to call it whatever part of the country you're from don't fall for this crap including this uh aaron brezel um trying to change your narrative remember i love psychology and narratives can be directed you know, just by wording, you read it and you start, it's brainwashing is what it amounts to. So I try to give you something to attack me even. I, I give the counter to my statements because uh, frankly, I want, you know, to find any of my errors of my, of my ways um, to uh, strengthen my education, no matter what it may be, with specifically with the understanding of this bridge. But I'm always willing to learn. All right. Thanks, guys. Wish you all success. And I'm going to find a way to terminate this video now. Got to come to hang out to so stop it here.